In a better world the fact that so many famous men have been credibly accused lately of UAL misconduct would make it harder to stand by any one of them. In the Nietzschean world we inhabit it's easier because more gets to hide in a crowd. Even though, unlike most of the men who've been swept up in scandal the past month, he's been accused of targeting a child. The very fact that abuse is prevalent ends up undermining the case for punishing it, even if the punishment is no harsher than denying high office to someone who faces multiple accusers. Congress apparently made its peace with that twisted logic long ago, given the toothlessness of the chamber's ethics committees. Now it's a straightforward matter of not making any special exceptions to exclude more. President Donald Trump's decision to embrace Roy Moore on Tuesday was rooted in several factors, but one of the biggest the noise and confusion from a recent tidal wave of UAL harassment and misconduct allegations from Hollywood to media to politics. It made it easier and easier to stick with Moore, a Republican source close to the White House said. Since then, it's become much harder to tell who the bad guys, said a Republican close to the White House, noting that the allegations against Democratic Sen. Al Franken, the renewed chatter about Bill Clinton, the explosive revelations about legacy newsman Charlie Rose and the suspension of New York Times reporter Glenn Thrush were all developments the president was following closely. It hasn't become any harder to tell who the bad guy is. It's become considerably easier. It's become harder politically to get rid of your own bad guys, though, as bad guys from the other side have been exposed. The charges against Moore are more serious than what Franken's facing but less serious than what Bill Clinton faces from Juanita Broderick. To boot Moore while both are still welcome in elite Democratic circles and while John Conyers defiantly crawls on would be viewed as unilateral disarmament by right-wing populists. Besides, as CNN rightly notes, Trump doesn't have the juice politically anymore to push more out of the race, assuming he ever did. If he could have forced the Alabama GOP to replace more by retracting his endorsement, he might have considered that as a price worth paying to demonstrate his raw political power. But primary voters slapped him hard by choosing more over his candidate, Luther Strange, and now Trump is afraid to cross more again. If he tells him to drop out and more says no, Trump looks weak. He'd rather stand with an accused child molester, knowing his base will stand with them, than look weak. There's another reason he's reluctant to dump more. How does he do that when he was in a similar situation a year ago? During animated conversations with senior Republicans and White House aides, the president said he doubted the stories presented by Moore's accusers and questioned why they were emerging now, just weeks before the election, according to two White House advisors and two other people familiar with the talks. He has also come to identify with the candidate. Trump has long viewed the tumultuous final month of the 2016 campaign as a critical moment in his political rise, when it became apparent who in the Republican Party was with him and who wasn't. As establishment Republicans withdrew their support for more in recent days, one senior White House official said, the president remembered that, many of those same figures abandoned him, too. The alleged victims and local residents who remember more chasing teens are all lying, apparently. And even if they aren't, noted one Alabama pastor, who can blame more for liking him young. The lady that he's married to now, Ms. Kayla, is a younger woman, he said. He did that because there is something about a purity of a young woman, there is something that is good, that's true, that's straight and he looked for that. Moore's totally innocent of these scurrilous charges, and even if he isn't, he hasn't done anything wrong. His opponent, Doug Jones, is killing with him ads over the scandal, releasing the one below today, but the latest poll brings some good news for more. He's up two points, the first survey in a week to show him ahead. The bad news is that the same pollster had him up six points against Jones a week ago. He's losing ground even in the polls that give him an edge. Maybe Trump will turn it around for him by campaigning in Alabama, although if he goes all in for more and more fumbles the seat away anyway, it'll be twice in the span of a few months that Trump bit big on the loyalty of deep red Alabama voters and lost. In lieu of an exit question, keep your eye on this news, Moore's communications director, John Rogers, has suddenly resigned with the election just three weeks away. That's unusual at this stage and suggests a profound difference of opinion internally on what the campaign should be doing ethically, maybe, to respond to the allegations against Moore. What happened behind the scenes that bothered Rogers so much he felt obliged to quit? It's probably not a pay dispute, as Moore has been flush with cash ever since the scandal erupted. You molested me when I was 14, and you usually assaulted me when I was 16, usually aren't big money makers when they're tossed at political candidate but that's how partisan donors roll now. A moral, 
pic.twitter.com 92 chemic 3y Doug Jones at Good Douglas Jones November 22, 2017